This episode is brought to you by the Norfolk Admirals Professional Ice Hockey Team. Family fun and affordable entertainment. Make memories, build relationships, and grow your business. For more information, visit NorfolkAdmirals.com. Well, today we are joined by three guests, actually. We have with us Matthew Stern of Health Clinics, Arlene Armentor, Armentor? I think I got that right. Gloucester uh, Matthews Care Clinic and Amber Martins of Lackey Clinic. Thank you all three for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Glad to be with you. Great to be here. (laughs) Kylie, why don't you take it from here? Well, I know when we first were introduced to the three of you was through um, Beth Cook. And you're all... I know it's it's like a similar offering that you do, which is why we thought we'd have you all on together today. Um, So we sort of want to ask you all the same question. You can answer it in your own way uh, related to your own clinics because I know that you sort of represent different cities, uh, which obviously is different clientele and you even have different offerings. So I sort of wanted to get an idea from each of you if you could just do like an elevator pitch summary of what you offer and what you do, who you are. Sure. Oh, yes. let's, let's start with Amber. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think uh, we're all kind of similar in a way um, because we all serve the same general population. And those are um, uninsured adults in the healthcare gap. And so those are the, our friends and neighbors that are out there working hard. Um, but after they're done paying the mortgage and the child care and the car payment, they struggle to afford the high cost of healthcare. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where our clinics all come in. Um, it's also hard for... Um, you know, their employers, they may not be able to afford even what the health, if they're offered health benefits, um, they may not be able to afford that coverage at work. And so it's generally um, any adult that might be making somewhere between nine and $25 an hour. So it's much higher than people think. Um, and then they would usually qualify for most of the services at all of our clinics. Uh, and Amber, and you're in what area? So Lackey Clinic provides um, quality health care um, to adults that are in Williamsburg, York, James City County, Pocosin and Newport News. And then we offer three different levels of service. Um, So we have a full patient, which would be medical and dental. We have dental only, and that's for people who have medical insurance but don't have dental insurance. And then we just recently launched something called virtual urgent care, which is where any person, even if they have insurance, can make a a telehealth appointment with a doctor uh, for $25. And if they have like a dental urgent need, like an abscess tooth, or you know, they wake up with a rash, an earache, uh, stomach problems, they can have that appointment, schedule it uh, whatever time in between the under lunch break, and they can see a doctor. Great. Oh, thank you. All right, Arlene. Well, Gloucester Matthews Care Clinic, much like Amber said, and she said it very well, um, we've been caring for our friends and neighbors who do not have insurance now since 1998. We most recently last year expanded our services to include folks who have Medicaid. Uh, and so we accept Medicaid from Anthem Healthkeepers, Optima Family Care, and Aetna Better Health. Um, much like Lackey, we provide medical care. We do uh, care for folks with chronic conditions, acute care issues. We have a dental clinic on site as well. Um, We also have an on-site pharmacy for our uninsured patients so they can get their prescriptions here um, on site. So we right now see probably about 400 patients and we service the areas, uh, the counties of Gloucester and Matthews. And then we also service folks who are in the southernmost portion of King and Queen County, which is just north of Gloucester. Okay, great. And Matthew or Matt? (laughs) Either one is fine. Yeah. So the health clinic is here in Hampton, Virginia, down here at the social services office, which is in the same building as the Hampton YMCA. And likewise, we serve uh, the population down here of folks who make too much money to qualify for Medicaid, but still can't afford to uh, swing the cost of health care. So we're providing medical and dental care for folks who are uninsured within that gap. Uh, We provide services to Hampton and Newport News residents here. Yeah. And I think that that's the interesting point that all of you have in common. Um, and you all sort of, you know, do have that similar offering. How, how well, first of all, I, I find it very interesting. How do you get funded? Well, let's take that one. <laughs> I'd be glad to. So, I mean, uh, we're all nonprofit organizations. Um, so we have a mix of funding that is, uh, some is generated from the state. We're all part of the 
uh, Virginia Association of Free and Charitable Clinics, which uh, helps to, to dole out an allocation from the state of Virginia uh, that assists uh, clinics like ours to continue providing services. We all apply for and receive a lot of grants. We have you know, independent funding. We have businesses that support the work we do. Um, so there's, uh, just like any other nonprofit out there, there's a, a wide mix of ways that we get funded. Excellent. So I want to know, as far as your patients go, what are they paying? Is it is it free service? Is it discounted? How's that work? I think we all have a very similar, but um, maybe a little bit different. Um, for Lackey Clinic, we ask um, for a $20 patient contribution from each patient when they have a medical or, or dental appointment or a vision appointment or a mental health appointment. Um, and then our, our prescriptions are usually $4 for a 30-day supply, whether it's brand name or generic. Okay. Um, but if anybody can't afford it, we're still going to see them. So they're never denied any kind of service. What is the extent to the care that you guys offer? Uh, we all have charity. Um, we all have agreements with the hospitals. So mm-hmm. Centera, Riverside, Bon Secours, we have patient care agreements. So all three of our clinics participate in that. So say, for an instance, a patient needed an MRI, a surgery, lab work done. Because we, are, we have these agreements with all three hospitals, Anything that we can't do in our clinic, we can refer them to the local hospital and it's at no additional charge to the patient. Amazing. Yeah. That's great. (laughs) And just to add another perspective on that, I mean, we, um, similar to Amber, we, we just request that patients, if they can make a donation toward their care, we suggest a $10, um, Donation for a physician visit, our 30-day supply of drugs is $4, but again, we will never turn anybody away uh, based on an inability to make a contribution, but we do find that a lot of our patients, they appreciate the care they get so much that they do want to pay it forward, Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes we've had patients pay two contributions so that they can pay it for the next patient who might not be able to afford it, which is really great. Right. Absolutely. Gosh, and so the the medical staff that you have, are they volunteers or do they, is that part of the funding that you get? Like, I mean, you've got to have a dentist and, and your nurse's assistant, nurse, I mean, doctor, I don't know the extent yeah. that you go to. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody's like board certified and um, volunteer and staff, a combination of both. So um, they're all top of the line, medical staff, pharmacy staff, dental staff, uh, mental health workers, uh, nurse practitioners, um, psychiatrists. So everybody is top of the line. And are they, uh, Matt, I suppose you were about to say something, but are they, are they paid or is it voluntary? Uh, well, for all of us, I think it's a combination of both. Um, here in Gloucester Matthews, we have two part-time physicians on our staff, as well as a psychiatric nurse practitioner. And then we supplement that with a number of volunteer physicians. Um, some of them uh, primary care, some of them specialty care, and they it's typically physicians who are retired, but they still want to practice. And so uh, they come in as volunteers and help us care for our patients. Mm. Is that the same with the with the other two? Very similar model here in Hampton that we have a part-time nurse practitioner on our staff, part-time dentist, and then we supplement that care with uh, other volunteers who are able to come in and, and assist. Yeah, and then with Blackie Clinic, it's, it's, it's basically the same. We have um, we have a little bit larger of staff. We, I think we have a broader um, geographical area that we cover. So we have um, about uh, 30 um, paid staff, um, part-time and full-time, that take care of our patients. Great. So I have a question about, um, so one of, I think it was uh, you had said earlier that um, the amount of like the income that people make who are going to the, is higher than you might expect it to be. How do you educate people about this? Because I've been in the workforce since I got out of the Navy for like, I don't know, 10 years now and never heard of anything like this, especially when I was, you know, making well below like that kind of amount. (laughs) Never. This has never been something I've heard of. I I think that's our biggest challenge is Mm -hmm. uh, we're we've had this. We've been around. I mean, all of us, we've been around 27 years. All of us have been around for multiple years. And I don't think people realize that we are here and that we can offer such quality services to people who don't qualify for Medicaid and are struggling. They just haven't heard of us. And so it's, I think our biggest challenge is getting the word out. It's just getting the word out. And we all have capacity to take on more patients. We want to help more people. We want to provide and keep our communities healthier and safer. And so we just want people to know about us. We want employers to know about us. We want the patients to know about us. Right. I suppose, I mean, with our podcast, 
hopefully we can get the message out too. But I mean, we have a lot of members with Retail Alliance who have employees. What do you want to say to them? Um, you know, who if they don't know about it and they've got, you know, they they can't afford, I mean, they're small businesses, they can't afford to be paying for health insurance for their employees, let alone half the time themselves. You know, so we're small businesses too. Uh, so we understand the cost of healthcare. We understand the how much it runs to, to make sure that our employees have benefits. So we know that in some cases, it's really uh, impossible to be able to afford. So we want to make sure that uh, members of Retail Alliance and, and all the small businesses, even medium-sized businesses in our area, know that there's an option out there to ensure that their employees have access to affordable and high-quality health care right in their own neck of the woods. Uh, so uh, there's there's no need to go out and pay for, for huge, expensive uh, benefits plans when these options are right here for folks who are working and who just need a little hand being able to afford health care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think no, that's an important part. Um, go ahead, oh, Darlene. No, I was just going to say, you know, Amber's right about the challenge uh, with our clinic, almost having been here 25 years. Yeah. There's still misconceptions out there. I've had people in the community tell me, oh, I thought you had to be unemployed to come to the clinic. So um, you can be unemployed. You can be employed as long as you meet the, the financial criteria. Um, you know, people are eligible to come here. So we certainly want to uh, you know, this podcast can help us get the word out and, and educate people about who we are and, and why we're here. I'm just still quite amazed that with such a great offering that the word hasn't got out already. So yeah, <laughs> because, <secret area. laughs> yeah. and I think it's important to know too, yeah, that all of us have an online application. So it's it's also meant that it's supposed to be easy for people to apply. Um, so like ours is 24 hours. You can go on, take pictures of the documents that we need, send it over email. It's not meant to be hard to apply. It's meant to be as easy as possible because people work different times of the day. They work different shifts. So it's all out there so that people can apply easily. Um, we even have a employer referral program so that you can go to our website, take 60 seconds to refer your employee to us. We'll contact the employee directly, um, whether it's for dental insurance, whether it's for the, you know, the full patient one, whether it's for virtual urgent care and make sure that they um, get all the information they need to, to get signed up. So it's, okay. it's we all well, want that's to- what I was gonna ask, yeah, about the process. Like if I was an employer and I wanted to provide it like as a, as a benefit in a way to an employee, is there an agreement or is it like, is it just informal and they put them forward and hopefully they'll get accepted? Like, is there something formalized a little bit more? Um, I think we each have a different, uh, well, actually very similar process. Um, so there's a financial requirement, obviously you have to meet our income guidelines and be in our geographical service areas. And each of ours is a little bit different. Um, and then for us, we have a medical approval. If you're applying for medical, um, once the financial part is taken care of, the medical team reviews your medical records to make sure that we can provide the services that you're requesting. So, so your, your, your main doctor would send that over? So our medical director would review the charts of the patient and make sure that the services they're requesting or their needs, we could meet, we could meet those needs. Okay. The um, other thing we would want the members of Retail Alliance to know is that if, you know, we'd be happy to go in, or at least from my standpoint, I know we're all, we all have smaller staffs, but, you know, we'd be happy to go in and, and present information to them if they want to learn more about the clinic. We've all got uh, brochures and things that we could provide that could be shared with the employees so the information can get out. Yeah, we have rack cards that could be included in, um, in their, uh, their basically new employee um, packet so mm -hmm. that they have information when, you know, if they don't have a health benefit package or if they have one that's not that affordable, that there's an alternative for that employee. And since we cover basically the whole peninsula on this side, we've got a whole section of it. There's yeah. usually one of our clinics can accommodate the employees that would be in that area. Okay. So you have to be employed or live. Is there, what's the criteria? For each of us? Yes. Um, so for us, you have to live within our jurisdiction, which is Williamsburg, James City County, York, Pocosin, or Newport News. You okay. need to be 18 or older. And then for us, you need to meet those income guidelines, um, which varies depending on your household size. But like I said, generally, it's somebody within 9 to $25 an hour. But if you've got multiple people living in your household, 
then that can obviously go up from there because it depends on how many people are in your household size. So it comes down to the household income. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. It looks like the other two are nodding here. So is that the same sort of deal? <laughs> Absolutely. Same for us. Yep. Hampton and Newport News and Arlene. Uh, so it really, on, on this podcast, we're talking about anybody from the Southern portion of King and Queen County, all the way South to Hampton and all the way West out to, to James City County. If anybody lives within that geographic area, it meets the income guidelines, which are easily accessible on all of our websites. It's listed up there. If you ever, if you have a question of, you know, well, do I, do I make the, do I make the cut? We've got plenty of information on there. Um, some of us have, uh, I think there's eligibility tools on there that yeah. you can plug in your income to see if it, if it works. Um, so it's just a, a couple of clicks away and you can find out if you, if you can uh, come here and get some, some really great health care for uh, prices that aren't going to break the bank. Yeah. So I mean, it's a good enrollment time too. So this is a perfect time to be seeing if you qualify because before you sign up for an unaffordable health care plan yeah. or your employer plan, you can see what your options are here. Okay. That was sort of my question. So even if your employer offers a plan, you could still elect for this option instead? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So if we do a little bit of math, if you think about an employer health care plan that's say a hundred dollars a month for your deductible or for your for your uh, premiums, mm-hmm. and then but on top of that you've got about a ten thousand dollar deductible, something happens to you. You've paid twelve hundred dollars throughout the year, plus you have to pay out of pocket that ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars before all of your full insurance kicks in. So you're eleven thousand two hundred dollars out of your pocket. Whereas if you come to the clinic here, um, then we're talking. You can come and see our doctors once a month. Uh, you could come to my dentist, you know, four times in a year, and at maximum, we'd be talking about two hundred and twenty dollars worth uh, worth of expenses related to your health care. So I, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of things that I can do in my life with an extra eleven thousand dollars. Absolutely. What and happens you, if you have to send them to hospital though? Well, like uh, Amber said, we have charitable care agreements with the uh, with the hospitals. They have uh, built in mechanisms to help folks who are you know, you know within the income guidelines that we're serving. So, uh, you know, if you have to go to hospital, it's, it's very, very likely that uh, all, if not most of those costs will be waived right away. Yeah. As long as you're a current patient, we refer to you. Yeah. Now I have a question, and I'm sure you guys, um, obviously it's all about helping people. Are there any options on the other side of Hampton Roads for the south side that is similar? Yeah, there's options throughout the state. Uh, like I said, we're part of the, the Virginia Association of Free and Charitable Clinics. Uh, and that's a network of, I think we're almost around 60 clinics throughout the state. So there's oh, wow. clinics over on the south side. There's some even farther north than Gloucester and Matthews up into the, the northern neck, Tappahannock area and uh, the northern Virginia, Richmond. And throughout the state, there's there's quite a bit of coverage for our, our free and charitable clinics. We absolutely have to get this out to more people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I think we didn't touch on just a little bit, I think mm-hmm. Arlene did, was um, we all have medication programs too. And that... All on top of the cost that Matt was talking about, say you're a diabetic and you need like brand name insulin, which is, I mean, hundreds of dollars each vial. We can all get that for our patients um, for free or for very low cost. So when you add up something, if you're on a chronic care med, um, heart, high blood pressure meds, heart meds, um, any of those things, um, we're able to get those, including the brand name ones for like next to nothing. And that's available to any of our patients and they can pick it up on the way out of their doctor's office, which is amazing, or right across the street. So it's it's another huge benefit um, to being one of our patients. Yeah, sounds like it. Well, OK, we're going to look into this, Joey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, what, what about any fears people might have about the clinics? Um do you can say anything to alleviate any of those concerns? Are people worried about long wait times, not being able to see a doctor, not being able to get in? What what are you what are you hearing? Um, I don't really hear that. I mean, I think all of us have um, the ability to. We both have. I think all three of us have um, telehealth appointments. So, say for instance, you're a busy worker or you have transportation mm-hmm. or childcare issues. All of us have the availability to have a telehealth appointment with the patient. So you can do that, um, you know, in the comfort of your own home on your on your phone or on a computer. Um, we have inpatient appointments. And I think all of us are, are very good about getting people in quickly, especially if there's an urgent need. Um, we you. have um, some same day appointments for people who have urgent need that come up for our patients, telehealth appointments in person. And I think all of us just... We, 
we all care about caring for the patient and that's our Absolutely. primary focus. Yeah. Well, and I think other concerns might be, you know, it, it, I guess all of us struggle with, maybe there's a myth out there that people think that, you know, is the care I'm going to get mm -hmm. at a, at a charitable clinic comparable to the care that I would get elsewhere. And I think we, uh, we provide such compassionate care and such excellent care. And our providers really take the time with the patient to treat the whole patient. You know, we look at, at the struggles the patient may be facing aside from physical um, struggles they may be having with food security or, or housing. And we try to connect people to resources in the community. So we're trying to deal with the whole, the whole patient as they come to us. Mm -hmm. And I think Matt, um, I know, I think we did like a Facebook uh, live with you not long ago. And I think you had some sort of accommodation or something as well tied yeah. to the clinic. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. So our organization, the clinic is, is uh, one portion of the work that we do here. And the other portion of the work that we do is really focused on uh, housing and homelessness and day support services. So we, uh, we offer a winter shelter program about 21 weeks out of the, out of the winter months. We'll be starting next week with that to allow anybody in Hampton who's dealing with, uh, you know, needing a place to sleep, uh, we make sure that that's available to them. We also have uh, a food pantry that provides about 20,000 meals a year to our community. Uh, we've got a day support center down in the Buckrow area that provides access to showers, laundry, case management services, human, uh, you know, basic human needs. Uh, have somebody who helps our folks get uh, vital documents because it can really be a challenge um, to get a, a birth certificate if you don't have an ID but then you can't get your, your ID if you don't have your birth certificate. So you get caught in the loop. So we have a specialist down there who can help folks uh, kind of navigate that world of vital documents as well. Mm -hmm. And how about the other two? Do you have sort of uh, things on the side in addition or is it your focus really on the, you know, the, the health part of it? Yeah, our, our focus is definitely more on just on the clinic side of it. So it's, it's, it's medical, dental, mental health counseling, and, and the medications, mm -hmm. um, and then our vision program as well. So we focus on, on the health care of the patient. Mm -hmm. And our clinic is the same as well. Um, one of the things we're concerned about right now as we hopefully transition to a post-COVID world is that we want to make sure that people, particularly our patients with chronic conditions, are really um, you know, taking their medications, watching their blood sugar, um, eating appropriately, nutrition, exercise, all of the things that go into making a healthy lifestyle that can prevent uh, a lot of illnesses on the front end. So we're really trying to, to push that with our patients and have those conversations. Mm -hmm. And one, thing, and one important thing I, I do want to mention is that the, the three clinics represented here mm -hmm. are pretty much in constant contact. We talk to each other all the time, if there's a service that I have within my organization that there may not be at Lackey or may not be at Gloucester Matthews that we can provide, then we're going to provide that for, for their patients. And similar to, to us being able to send folks to either Lackey or Gloucester Matthews, if there's something that they have that we don't. So it, it, there's really a very well integrated network of care here for things that go just beyond healthcare. So if, there, if there's something that, that my team can provide when it comes to, to food security or any of the other things we do, we're happy to, to jump in and be partners uh, in caring for folks with, with uh, our other two clinics here. Okay. So sometimes that geographic limitation is, you know, pushed to the side in terms, you know, when the importance of the patient comes first. Absolutely. Correct. That's so great. you had talked, uh, we were getting close to uh, on time, so I just want to get one more question at least in, is you had talked about how you have deals with some of the local hospitals if you need to send someone for a, a more extensive uh, procedure. Do you have any um, retroactive type of deals if there's an emergency and one of your um, clients has to go to the ER? Um, do you have anything to help in, in that kind of situation? Um, it's, it's the same thing. So if a, one of our patients, if they're a valid patient, so that means they haven't expired, yeah. um, a patient for each of us has to recertify every year to make sure they stay qualified. Okay. Um, and if they are a current patient, it shows up in their, their electronic health record when they go into the hospital. And Excellent. then they're supposed to show them and identify themselves as one of our patients. And even if it's the emergency room, um, they're supposed to let us know. So we tell them to go to the emergency room. But if it's a life-threatening emergency yeah just go and identify yourself as one of our patients. And then the hospital knows that that's part of that patient care agreement. Excellent. That's perfect. Yeah. Is there anything else any we would like to add? Because I know we are close to time. 
Yes. And make sure to let people know where they can find you What in there in this little last part. Um, I think it just each of us can, we'll, can give a phone number and a website, but it's just, if you have questions, if this is like, wow, I wonder if I qualify or I wonder if my employees could just reach out to us. We're all free, like super accessible. And we want to answer questions. We want to come out to your businesses or send you information about our businesses. So just reach out, email, phone, <laughs> carrier pigeon, spotlight, whatever. <laughs> Well, Amber, do you want to just give your, you know, name, the clinic and your phone number? Sure. Yeah, I'm Amber Martins. I'm the director of eligibility here at Lackey Clinic. Um, our phone number is 757-886-0608. And then our website where you can find all the information and the employee um, employer referral program is www.lackeyclinic.org. And that's L-A-C-K-E-Y clinic dot or sorry lackeyhealthcare.org and then you can just go ahead and click on the employer referral program or click on become a patient and see all the information great Arlene yes I'm Arlene Amator the executive director here at Gloucester Matthews Care Clinic and folks can uh, reach us by going to GM careclinic.com. That's Gloucester Matthews, gmcareclinic.com and our phone number is 804-210-1368. Great. Matt. Yeah, I'm Matthew Stern. I'm the executive director here at the HELP organization, which includes the HELP Clinic. Uh, our website is helphampton.org. That's H-E-L-P Hampton.org. Our phone number here at the clinic is 757-727-2577. And we'd love to, to chat with you about getting your employees signed up for, for healthcare here with us. Great. And we'll also put these details uh, in where we can as well to add to it. So to make life easy for people. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you all coming on and joining us on our podcast. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. All right. You've been listening to the Retail Is podcast. If you've enjoyed what you heard, you can find more at retailalliance.com slash retail dash is dash podcast or search YouTube for Retail Alliance. I'm Joey Morgan. And I'm Kylie Ross-Seibert. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.